For the first example, let's do a coat. First, we need to ask ourselves, what folds are located where? This was covered briefly in part one, and references also help. The next question to think about is, how thick is the material, and how hard is the material? The coat in this example is medium thick, so we want a medium sized brush. It will also be somewhat hard and stiff, so we want to use the crease tool with subtract turned on. Let's start by drawing out the shape of the fold. To emphasize the folds, I alternate between the subtract mode and turning it off, in order to have mountain folds right next to valley folds. Since the material is medium thick, so I would space the folds medium distance apart. For the X-shaped type folds, one trick I like to do is first draw out all the X's, and once done, in the middle of these diamond shapes, I would draw a horizontal line to emphasize the fold even more. After most of the folds are in place, I then use the smooth tool and the drag tool to move them around and make it look more organic. Let's do another example. Say we want to sculpt a shirt, so this shirt would be relatively thin and we would use a smaller brush. It's also a soft cotton material, so we want to use the round brush rather than the crease tool. I start out by drawing the folds where they're expected to be based on references and also previously discussed points of tension. Place the X folds in the inside of the elbow. Because the material is thin, the folds are located close together. Turn on subtract to emphasize some of the valley folds. And here's the final result. 